Bud Cherry Syndrome, a comprehensive overview. In this video, we will learn about Bud Cherry Syndrome, a rare yet important condition involving the liver. Bud Cherry Syndrome occurs when there is an obstruction or blockage of blood flow within the hepatic venous system, which is responsible for draining blood from the liver into the systemic circulation. This obstruction can result from blood clots, known as thrombosis, or external compression of the veins. The most common underlying cause of venous thrombosis in this condition is polycythemia vera, a disorder that increases the number of red blood cells, making the blood thicker and more prone to clotting. Other causes include hepatocellular carcinoma, certain inherited hypercoagulable states, oral contraceptive use, and even physiological states like pregnancy or the postpartum period. Now let's understand what happens in Bud Cherry syndrome. When the hepatic veins are blocked, blood is unable to leave the liver efficiently. This leads to venous congestion, which increases pressure in the liver's tiny blood vessels, called sinusoids. Over time, this increased pressure causes damage to liver cells, known as hepatocellular necrosis, and can result in what we call a nutmeg liver. This term refers to the characteristic speckled appearance of the liver on gross examination, caused by areas of congestion interspersed with normal tissue. Clinically, patients often present with symptoms such as right upper quadrant abdominal pain, which is usually due to stretching of the liver capsule. They may also have hepatomegaly, meaning an enlarged liver, and ascites, which is fluid accumulation in the abdomen. Jaundice can also occur, indicating that the liver's ability to process bile is impaired. In some cases, patients might develop varices or distended veins due to increased blood flow through collateral pathways. However, an important point to note is that Bud Cherry syndrome does not typically cause jugular venous distension, helping us differentiate it from conditions like right-sided heart failure. To diagnose this condition, the first-line investigation is usually a Doppler ultrasound, which can detect impaired blood flow in the hepatic veins. Further imaging, such as CT or MRI, can provide a detailed assessment of the vascular structures. When it comes to treatment, the main goal is to restore blood flow out of the liver. In some cases, balloon angioplasty or stenting is used to reopen blocked veins. If clots are present, localized thrombolysis may help dissolve them. Long-term anticoagulation therapy is essential to prevent new clots from forming. For patients with severe complications, such as portal hypertension, procedures like TIPS, or transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt, may be necessary. Additionally, treating the underlying cause, whether it's a malignancy, a hypercoagulable state, or another condition, is critical for managing the disease effectively.